Welcome back to Legion Builds, where I show you how to bring your favorite fictional characters into Dungeons & Dragons. Today, we are building Jin Sakai, the hero of Ghost of Tsushima, or maybe the villain, depending on who you ask. Jin is a former samurai who gives up the ways of honor to become the ghost, the living embodiment of vengeance against the Mongol horde and those that oppress and hurt the innocent. Today's goals are to create a warrior who utilizes tools generally seen as criminal or dishonorable. This means poison, fire, and extreme violence. Next, you need to become a boogeyman. The ghost is so feared, enemies drop their weapons and run at the mere sound of your name. Finally, we need to make you a better version of a character from Assassin's Creed than the last several Assassin's Creed protagonists. I'm a huge fan of Assassin's Creed, but games have become repetitive. Ghost is what they should be like. For this build, we're using the Player's Handbook, Xanathar's Guide to Everything, and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. We're using Standard Point Array and... Damn, do I hate it this time. Listen, I use standard point array because it makes it easier for all of you to transfer the characters to either a roll system or point by. But this time, I can't agree with all the stat choices. But we have to make it work because I'm restricted. We are multi-classing, so pay attention to minimums. We'll start things off with intelligence at 15. You need to understand how to use the tools and tactics so no one can see you coming. Speaking of not being able to see you coming, dex will follow at 14. You want to be sneaky? You're going to need a good dex score. Wisdom will be 13. You don't have eagle vision, but focus hearing is almost as good, and that's perception based. Next will be charisma at 12. Those that know Jin love him. Those that know the ghost fear him. Both charisma based qualities. Khan will be low with 10, and we're going to have to dump strength. Both of these stats are bad. Your katana is strength based and a zero modifier to health sucks, but as I said, I'm restricted and limited in what I can do. Take this and improve it. Jin is just a man, but the ghost is more. Actually, the ghost is also a man, but I'm not feeling like very inhuman today. Custom Lineage grants you a free feat and skill with stat improvements. Place plus two in the decks and grab a touched. Fey Touch adds plus one to intelligence and grants you two spells. Gift of Alacrity sharpens your reflexes and gives you a d8 to your initiative for eight hours. Misty Step will be your grappling hook because a stealth ninja game can't have a realistic grappling hook. You can teleport 30 feet with a bonus action. For your skill, let's get sneaky with stealth. For background, grab animal handling and intimidation. I'm sorry, but the best part of Ghost is you get to pet foxes and I will be damned if I don't give you something that lets you pet foxes. We're going to be starting you out as a plain old fighter, like in the game. You gain the use of all armor and weapons. A katana is a long sword, but your strength sucks, so go with rapier because your dex will always be better than strength, unless you're rolling for stats and you get a great strength score. For skills, take perception and acrobatics. Level 1 fighters start off with a fighting style. Take whatever you want because you're good with all of them. Me though, I'm going to go with archery to add 2 plus to attack rolls with ranged weapons. I'm doing this because it's easier to sneak in if you take out all the watchmen from a distance. Second Wind lets you heal yourself 1d10 plus your fighter level with a bonus action. Level 2 fighters receive Action Surge. You can now give yourself another action for free once per short or long rest. Level 3 fighters gain their subclass. Jin may be a samurai in the game, but he is a battle master in D&D. If you're wondering why we aren't going with samurai even though you got a decent charisma and wisdom, Jin fights in a very tactical way that Battlemaster will be better at. Samurai in D&D are more diplomatic with their features than Jin is. Combat superiority grants you superiority dice. These are 4d8s that you can spend to perform special maneuvers. You have 3 maneuvers at this level and will gain more. For these maneuvers, evasive footwork lets you duck and roll by adding your superiority dice to your AC as long as you don't stop moving. Ambush lets you add your superiority dice to a stealth check or initiative roll. Menacing Attack lets you frighten a creature you hit, adding the superiority dice to the damage roll you force a wisdom save. Should they fail, they are scared of you until the end of your next turn. Level 4 Fighters earn our first ability score improvement. Add this to Dex because we're about to need it. Your Lord has been captured and now you see the Samurai Code of Combat only works if your enemy follows the same code. 
time for something new. Jumping over to Rogue, you receive another skill. Grab Survival to begin tracking your enemies out in the open. Level 1 Rogue start things off with Expertise. Choosing two skills, you can now add double your proficiency bonus to them. Throw this into Stealth and Perception. Sneak Attack deals extra damage to an enemy while you wield a finesse or ranged weapon, and you have advantage on the attack or within 5 feet of an ally. Now your Longsword will not have this ability. So this is why I say a rapier, but in the game you never sneak attack with your sword. Your sneak attack damage is currently 1d6, but this will go up. Level 2 rogues gain cunning action. Now dash, disengage, and hide are bonus actions for you. Alright, time for some dishonorable weapons. Level 1 wizards are spellcasters. You have a spell book with 3 cantrips and 6 spells and can prepare a total number of spells per day equal to your wizard level plus intelligence modifier. Arcane recovery lets you recover spell slots once per day. These spell slots must be a combined level equal to or half your wizard level, and can't be 6th level or higher. Okay, time to get through your spells. Firebolt throws a ball of fire at a target within 120 feet, dealing 2d10 fire damage. Green Flame Blade ignites your sword and deals 1d8 fire damage, and then the fire hits another target within 5 feet of the original target, dealing 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier in fire damage. Poison Spray fires a poison dart at a target within 10 feet of you and forces a con save, dealing 2d10 poison on a failure. Magic Missile launches 3 kunai that auto hit the target within 120 feet of you, dealing 1d4 plus 1 per kunai in force damage. By adding spell levels, you add more kunai. Shield adds plus 5 to your AC as a reaction and stops Magic Missile from hitting you. Long Strider adds plus 10 to your movement for 1 hour. Cause Fear targets one creature within 60 feet of you and forces a Wisdom save. On a failure, they are frightened of you for 1 minute while you maintain this spell. At the end of each of its turns, the creature can retake the save. Fall Cloud releases a Smoke Bomb within 120 feet of you, creating a 20 foot radius sphere heavily obscuring the area for 1 hour while you maintain this spell but you'll just use this to blind your enemies and run. By adding spell levels, you can increase the radius by 20 feet per level. Detect Magic highlights magical items or things being affected by spells for 10 minutes while you maintain this spell. You don't know what magic it is, but you will know what school it's from. Level 2 Wizards gain their subclass. Invocation Wizards specialize in damage. Sculpt Spell allows you to choose a number of creatures that will be within the area of a spell that causes a save to automatically pass the DC and take no damage from the spell. You can choose a number of creatures equal to 1 plus your spell level. Not really useful at the moment, but this will be helpful. For your new spells, Disguise Self lets you look like the enemy for one hour, helping you get past their defenses without danger. You create an illusion around yourself and make yourself look like another person. Heads up, this is just an illusion and will not hold up if you are touched or they pass an investigation check. You get one more spell, take what you want. I take Featherfall, but it's not in character, so I can't justify adding it. Take Featherfall. Back over to Fighter for level 5 Fighter. You now have extra attack, meaning you can attack twice with a single attack action. And back to Wizard. Level 3 Wizards gain access to second level spells. For your new spell, Magic Weapon turns a non-magical weapon into a plus 1 weapon for 1 hour while you maintain the spell. Locate Object allows you to sense the direction of an object for 10 minutes while you maintain the spell. It's not too often I can give characters waypoints, so here it is. Level 4 Wizards earn another ability score improvement. Place this into Intelligence for better spell attacks, DC, and one more spell you can prepare. You get two more spells, take what you want. There's a lot of good damage spells here that I can't suggest because they're not in character, but you can give yourself a flamethrower. You also gain a new cantrip, grab what you want. Your character level 11 now. Firebolt does 3d10 fire damage, Poison Spray does 3d12 poison damage, and Green Flame Blade does 2d8 fire damage to the first and second targets. Level 5 wizards can now access third level spells, and now the fun begins. Fear activates Ghost Stance. Creating a 30 foot cone, you force a wisdom save on everyone within the cone. Should they fail, they become frightened of you, drop what they're holding, and now must run away from you. 
The only action they can take is dash and they cannot retake the save if they can still see you. Fireball releases a massive blast within 150 feet of you. Everyone within the 20 foot radius sphere must make a dex save or take 8d6 fire damage. Level 6 Evocation Wizards now have Potent Cantrip. Now when a creature passes a save caused by a cantrip you cast, they take half damage. For your new spells, Flame Arrow adds a d6 of fire damage on up to 12 arrows while you maintain the spell for one hour. Phantom Speed summons Kage to you, or whatever you name the horse. For one hour you summon a ghost-like mount that uses the stats for a riding horse, found in the player's handbook page 310. Except your mount has a speed of 100 feet and can travel 10 miles per hour. If the steed takes damage, it vanishes. Okay, we're done with wizard, time to return to rogue. Level 3 rogues gain steady aim. As a bonus action, on a turn you haven't moved, you can give yourself advantage on your next attack that turn, but now your speed will be 0 to the end of your turn. Your sneak attack is now 2d6, and you receive your subclass. Time for some more poison and better sneak attacking with Assassin. You now are proficient with both Poisoner's Kits and Disguise Kit. Assassinate gives you advantage on attack rolls against creatures that haven't taken their turn in combat yet. Also, now when you hit a creature that is surprised, you get to score a critical hit automatically. Level 4 rogues earn another ability score improvement, cap off dex. And now we're done with rogue. Level 6 fighters earn another ability score improvement. I'm giving this one to you. Place it wherever you want. I'm placing this in strength to get rid of that negative. Level 7 Battlemaster Fighters gain Know Your Enemy. Now, after spending at least one minute studying or interacting with a creature outside of combat, you learn information about them. This information is compared to your information, allowing you to know if two of the following facts are equal, superior, or inferior to you. Strength score, deck score, con score, AC, HP, total class levels, or total fighter class levels. Think of this when you're hiding in the tall grass and observing your target. You you also learn two more maneuvers for these maneuvers. Trip attack lets you throw a creature down after you hit them. Adding your superiority dice to the damage, you force a strength save, knocking them prone should they fail. Repose allows you to use your reaction to attack a creature that has missed you with a melee attack, adding the superiority dice to the damage should you hit. You're now character level 17. Firebolt does 4d10 fire damage, Poison Spray does 4d12 poison damage, and finally, Green Flame Blade does 3d8 fire damage to the first and second target. Level 8 fighters earn our final ability score improvement. Once more, add it to where you want. I'm choosing Charisma. Level 9 fighters receive Indomitable. You can now reroll a failed saving throw, including death saves, once per long rest. Our final level is level 10 fighter and battle masters gain improved combat superiority, making your superiority dice D10s. You also receive your final two maneuvers for those maneuvers. Parry lets you use your reaction to reduce damage you take from a melee attack by your superiority dice plus dex. Lunging attack gives your melee attacks a five plus to your reach, adding superiority dice to the damage should you hit. Now that we've hit level 20, let's recap on how you should look. Your stats should be, if you went with the same last two improvements I did, Strength 10, Dex 20, Con 10, Intelligence 18, Wisdom 13, Charisma 14. And your total levels are Fighter 10, Wizard 6, Rogue 4. Alright, let's dive in. Where should I actually begin? Your stealth is a plus 17. You can release a smoke cloud to cover your tracks. You auto crit on surprise creatures and your reflexes with initiative gives you plus five, plus a D8 and or plus a D10. Good chance you will go first a lot, meaning you have advantage on your first turn attack even if you initiate a standoff. Your magical damage is great with just your cantrips dealing 4D10 fire damage or 
4d12 poison damage. And oh yeah, even if they succeed on a con save with poison spray, they will still take half damage. Your normal damage isn't bad either, dealing extra d10s and performing special moves, or even adding 2d6 sneak attack damage. Finally, you are scary when you activate Ghost Stance forcing people to run away from you and allowing you to attack them without fear of being attacked back. Downside. Now where do I begin here? How about your health? Taking the average, you will only have 108, which is good for a spellcaster, but horrible for a martial class. You're adding plus five to leather and studded leather, which is good, but when you get hit, you will not be happy. Speaking of taking hits, your saves aren't great. Your proficient saving throws are only adding plus six, and those are your best ones. Pro tip, kill the spellcasters from very, very, very far away and make sure they don't see you because they're going to love you. In combat, this build is good. You're dealing extra damage, magical damage, and have a wide range of damage types. It's a very subtle tactical build. Utilize your skills, plan out the attack, and your shortcomings will not matter. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to check out all my other builds, such as Trevor Belmont from Castlevania, Alex Mercer from Prototype, and more. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube or Spotify to not miss a single new build each week, and character requests are always open. 